everyone and welcome to the House of Jensha. Thank you for joining me today and a lot of people have gotten their vaccines and are a little bit low in their immune system and it's just so cold outside and in the middle of winter and then sometimes our energy gets depleted. So today I wanted to do a practice to boost our energy, boost our immune system and all of you old timers will be very, very aware of this flow already but I'm going to show it anyway and share it and the new people can just follow along. Uh, also Lola is getting a lot of questions about what's the difference between the art of Jinshin and the core so I'm going to point it out to you and show you. So the art of Jinshin is a self-help book it's only well actually you can practice everything on others also but it's laid out very in a very different way it shows pictures of of everything like this. So as I'm going to show the spleen flow today, which is the key to the immune system and the energy booster, I'm showing you the picture of how it's demonstrated in the art of Jinshan. And in the core, which is a book how you can practice on others, of course you can also practice on yourself, it's demonstrated like this. So it shows the safety energy locations and you don't see pictures of each of the steps separately. So when it says sit on the right, sit on the left, it's as a practitioner and you sit on the right or left side of the receiver. While in the Art of Jinshin, it explains exactly how to practice it on yourself as shown these pictures, which I'm gonna do with you now today. So to practice the spleen flow, I would like you to go to check your SEL5, which is right here on the inside of the ankle bone and see which one feels tighter to you the right side or the left side so the right side will be the right spleen flow and the left side will be the left spleen flow now if it's hard for you to reach your SEL5 you can go to the one or you can start on the pubic bone so we're going to place one hand on the tailbone and the other hand on our SEL5, right here, or on the one, or if that's hard to reach, you can start here. So um, holding the, the coccyx and the pubic bone is, is a very dynamic hold. It helps total body circulation. And personally, I do like to start on the five. You can also do this lying down like this, very comfortable. I do this uh, sometimes watching my Netflix. You know, your hands can al always be busy. That's the beautiful thing about it. People ask me when to do it, and really you can just practice any time. So just take a nice few breaths here, and remembering that Jinshin automatically will get us into the breath. There's really nothing to do other than listening to your energy, which you can feel um, on your fingertips as a pulsation. So that's how the energy is expressed and that's what, how we can recognize um, bringing our bodies back into rhythm with universal energy. We can feel that by the pulsation and the different qualities of the pulse. And if you don't feel all of that, then that's totally fine, you will. The pulse is there and it's really an awareness. So the more you practice, the more you will start to become aware of this pulsation. And, oh, I'm really starting to relax now. So I hope Lola's practicing along too. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this flow. And Mary Burmeister, she really presented this as a flow to practice every day on yourself for daily maintenance and that is because the spleen flow really gives energy to all the other organ functions. Also when your pulse, the pulsation is very quiet then the spleen flow is also the flow to practice because it will bring up the energy completely in the body. And remember that the first step of the flow is the facilitator to the whole flow. So that's really the most important step, this first step. So even if you have time 
just to do the first step, then you're well on your way to bringing energy back into your body. And then from the five, and the five helps uh, to regenerate. Um, if you're on the one, or on the five, or on the, on the cubic bone, now move to your opposite 14. So the opposite to the five, right here. And I'm just gonna sit up, you know, read to you a little bit what it says in the book. So the spleen flow is depth one. It peaks from 10 a.m. till 12. So actually right now we are in spleen time. And for example, if you feel very tired in the morning, it means that you probably will need a spleen flow. So at these times when these flows peak, it's when your body is giving you a message of what's going on. So again, it's becoming aware of where you are, which is so important. The organ pair, the, go, the one that goes with it, is the stomach flow. So the stomach flow is the descending part, and, and the spleen flow is the ascending part. And the stomach flow becomes the spleen flow at the big toe. So this is an ascending flow, energy moves up, it helps our inhale, and it the, the attitude is worry. So if we worry a lot, and it burdens the spleen energy, with, which can make you tired and it can deplete you. It's a waistline flow, it helps to clear the waistline, it helps our worldly desires, and the opposite of worry is trust. When you worry a lot, it's really thinking in the future, and if you trust in the bigger sense, then the worrying will be harmonized. The flavor is sweets. So if you have sweet cravings, and Lola is nodding yes, <laughs> then the spleen flow is excellent also. And now let's move our hand from the tailbone to SEL 13, which is on the chest at the third rib, which helps to harmonize our, our lungs and our heart. It's all the organs that live in the chest, harmonizing our feelings, allowing for our creativity to come out. And then we'll move to the 22. 22 allows for the exhale and it helps us adapt to the situation. It also helps the thyroid and it helps communication and breathing as well. So this is a very powerful um, little flow and I just want, would like to practice with you the other side. Now you can only practice one side because if you open up one side, it will automatically support the other side. But just for these purposes, and so that it's easy for you to remember, let's just practice the other side. So we're going to place one hand on the coccyx and the other hand on SEL5, or one, or the pubic bone. So I'm giving you a few options here. So I'm going to place it right now on the pubic bone. So this first hole helps total body circulation. The element is earth of the spleen flow, and the season is the hottest part of the season. So it can be the hottest part in the summer, which is often Indian summer, but it can also be in the winter when there's a very warm day. And in New York, actually yesterday, we had a beautiful warm day, and that's sometimes when you feel that the spleen flow needs to be revitalized. So that means the hottest part of the season. This flow also helps with knee projects since it starts on the big toe and moves on the inside of the leg through the knees and then crosses over to the other side, to the opposite chest. So let's move our hand to the opposite 14. So as you see, we're moving through this fairly quickly and you can practice two ways. You can wait till you feel the pulsation and then move to the next spot, 
or you can stay with it a little bit longer till the pulse actually completely harmonizes and settles down. So depending on how much time you have and how you like to practice, both are fine. And then we'll place our hand from the tailbone to the opposite 13. Just being aware of the breath. And again, this is deep flow for sweet cravings. That means that your spleen flow, your spleen energy needs to be harmonized. So our body tells us everything. And then to the 22. So a quick hold for the entire spleen flow is holding the thumb. That helps to harmonize the spleen flow. And I just wanted to tell you that we are going to do a workshop with the book The Art of Jinshin because so many people have questions and it's a four week workshop. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email Lola at jinshininstitute.com. She's sitting here waiting to communicate with you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we always have a lot of fun. So that will be interactive, this workshop. We will go in breakout rooms where I can visit the breakout rooms. We can discuss individual questions and moving through the whole book, The Art of Jinshan. So it will definitely be fun. And I hope to see you all there. Have a wonderful day and enjoy.